the core from which we are creating visualizations tend to be textual. And so that's already um, a smaller niche. But I would also probably emphasize that our approach to visualization tends to come out of a very deep humanistic interpretive set of practices that mean that we are in dialogue with you know, scientific visualization with even information design in terms of clarity and density and exploration and various things that for different communities, uh, there are different priorities. And I think that the kinds of visualizations that we're working on, to some extent, try to pull from multiple sources, but are certainly informed by our own backgrounds as humanists. I think uh, a lot of the visualizations that are used in informatics come from scientific traditions uh, and they bring uh, they bring interpretive baggage that is not from the humanities. I've just spent uh, three months with Johanna Drucker and uh, Chris Meister and so on in, on a project where we're trying to recover the interpretive possibility for visualizations, recover the way visualizations might not present themselves as, as objective representations of, of data in the sense of, you know, data that is really given by the world and instead drawing on Johanna's uh, language, you know, representations of an interpretive process where the interpreter is in the representation, in some sense the audience and the rhetorical purpose is there, the data isn't data, she calls it CAPTA, uh, and seeing if we can't sort of recover and build much more fluid and uh, hermeneutical ways of doing visualization. This is at the early phase, and um, right now it's really much more of an ideation, almost creative process. There's an emphasis on a process where the, the use of the tool isn't the end in, 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 in my mind, and I think we, sh we share this, that you know, it's, it is really part of a process, and that um, it's an intellectual process of thinking through uh, the text and the visualizations and so on, um, but the work doesn't stop there. We tend to have a bias towards believing what we see. And I think one of the first things that, at least when I'm teaching uh, with Voyant, that I try to encourage uh, students is to um, question uh, what they're seeing and what they're not seeing. Um, so to approach uh, these tools with a certain degree of, of skepticism that I think uh, is not only um, appropriate given how they're developed, but also very um, generative as uh, humanists in terms of questioning what we're doing. Interactive visualizations are now appearing all over the place. Word clouds, little network diagrams. So someone like Edward Tufte was talking about, um, you know, in some sense, uh, literacy around quantitative representation of information, but he was, he was looking at static representations and in, in uh, at least in his early books. Literacy in general is knowing not just how to read a business graphic or bar charts or a pie chart or something like that, it's knowing how to work with these interactive visualizations that allow you to uh, uh, query information, um, uh, zoom in and out and so on like that. So I think just like other forms of literacy, we and others are um, in a sort of evolving process of teaching the literacy, also figuring out what certain graphic features and interactions mean. Well, one thing that intrigued me, and I don't know quite where this is going, is I see more and more data journalism. I see more and more uses of visualization for narrative, narrative and rhetorical uses of visualization, where you know the Guardian wants to actually convince you of something rather than simply explore it for you. The second thing I, I think is very important, and I don't know quite how to connect it, is video games. Because I think video games are one of the places where people are learning um, interactive visual literacy. And I'm, I'm convinced there's a connection, but I, I don't quite see how it's emerging um, or how the, the, the literacy that kids learn in games necessarily affects what happens later on. So I'm not quite sure where that's going, but I feel it's important. And I guess the last thing I'll say, I would say is that I think visualization is now morphing into sort of physical computing. I see more and more projects where it's, it's not just on the screen. Pokemon Go has just come out. That's on a screen, but it's on your mobile screen. You've got to run around the town. I haven't played it. It's, it hasn't come to Canada yet, but 
uh, it's taking off this augmented reality and I have colleagues that there's all sorts of ways you can get computing into physical objects and begin to prototype and build stuff and that's tactile the visual and the tactile it's all it's a much more richer mature environment and it's going to be very exciting